Okay, so like I said, there is a software package that Asus includes it's called the AI Suite. And it's more of a hardware control package is what I kind of consider it. You can set your fans um, on profiles, which is what I did. CPU fan, you can see there that as temperature increases, so does the fan speed. And that was how I was able to keep the system quiet, but still cool uh, when it was actually doing a lot of processing. And I was able to set a profile for the CPU fan, as well as the two chassis fans that I have installed. And the water pump. Uh, RPMs on the water cooler as well and then I got to overclocking I came in here and this was nice because I could actually run tests in the software and make sure that I had um, the speed that I could attain pretty quickly tested and not have to do a bunch of reboots to do it through the BIOS one thing to note on this particular software package is it wants the default to just one core so I had to click that to turn on all four and then literally when I came in here stock it was set to 39 and all I did was start increasing this and I started off at 44 uh, because I knew from the TPU switch on the motherboard that it would handle 44 just fine so I set that to 44 and then 45 and 46 when I got to 46 that was when I had to bump the core voltage for the processor up just a little bit and you can even do that in the software as well I ended up just bumping it um, you know it goes up in increments of five thousandths so that's what I did until I got to a stable mark uh, in my testing. Once that was complete, I then enabled the XMP profile on the memory. That is a built-in performance profile from the memory manufacturer. And there's a uh, setting in the BIOS to just turn that on and it will load those memory speeds and timings uh, automatically. And then I retested to make sure I was still stable. And then finally, there's the CPU cache ratio. Uh, ideally, you want these two to match, the, the, um, what I call the clock ratio or the multiplier and the cache ratio. I tried it at 46, it um, had some stability issues, so I just started dropping it down. It's the same idea, you just click the arrows. Uh, I found that the system was totally stable at 44, and so that's where I ended up. And you'll notice down here, the CPU will run at uh, an 8 multiplier all the way up to a 46 multiplier depending on the demands of the CPU. So you can see there it's changing on the fly. Um, CPU core voltage does the same thing. Uh, that's the max voltage it'll ever see is that. Um, but it fluctuates. And it does the max based on a default plus the extra that I added here. You want to be careful with the voltage. And also keep an eye on your temperature. They are related. Indeed, voltage effect temperature to get to 47 which I did test I had to increase this voltage by a lot um, I think I said almost double what I've got here and it just wasn't worth it for the extra 100, 100 megahertz and so that told me I had met the sweet spot for this processor so that's how I did it once I knew what I could do in the software I then went into the BIOS and set it permanently and I'll show you that next one last thing is you can get this set up and like I said, you can save it as a profile. So here's where I was doing my testing. I had a 4.5 gigahertz, and then I went to 4.6. And I tried 4.7. This was after I enabled XMP, and um, this one failed. So I knew 4.6 was the sweet spot with XMP enabled. So now let's go have a look at the BIOS, and I'll show you how you set this stuff permanently. Okay, here we are in the BIOS. Um, you just hit delete or F2 on most systems as it's booting up before it gets in the operating system it'll bring you into the BIOS and this is the um, what they call a UEFI BIOS and that's a unified extensible firmware interface and these new ones are nice and easy to work with used to you just had um, arrow keys that you had to use on the keyboard but now the mouse and uh, everything works really nice so it's much easier than it used to be uh, I jump in here and there's a an easy mode or an advanced mode um, this is the main page in easy mode. This is what you're going to see. You can go into the tuning wizard and it'll almost do everything for you. Uh, based on my testing in the software that I showed you before, I jump straight to advanced mode because I'm just going to go here and set the things the way I want them to be. I go to AI Tweaker XMP. That's where I talked about that memory setting. And on this particular one, it pulled back a DDR4 3200 speed with 16, 18, 18, 36 at 1.35 volt setting. 
So that is directly from the manufacturer. It pulled that out of the memory and automatically applied it. Base clock frequency we saw before, leave that alone. You're gonna sync all cores. That's where you tell it to do all and not just uh, not just one core. 46, then literally you just type it in. You can do 44, you can do 40, 46, just like that. And you'll see it set all four cores to 46. DRAM frequency ratio, I left that to auto. This was all pulled in from the uh, memory. You can see it's got DDR4-3200 there. One thing you do want to check is I came into here and to get system stability, there's a CPU load line calibration. And what that basically means is when I give the CPU a set voltage, um, it starts to use some of that power and the voltage can drop below the setting I've uh, instructed it to be just by power draw. And so you can set the level of power maintain setting, I guess is the way to think of it. it. It tries harder to keep that that voltage level that you've established. And so there's auto, level one, level two, level three. And I just basically came in here and set these until I saw the voltage staying pretty solid to what I had uh, set for the CPU under full load. So we go back and then we come down some more. Here's that, um, CPU ratio we saw in the software that was 44. So I just set it 44 here. And then here's the uh, core voltage. So by default, it's 1.200. I set it to offset mode, which means it's going to add, which is the offset plus sign there. It's either add or subtract. So I'm gonna add in my case. And I just typed in 0 0.040. And so what that means is it will add voltage to 0.020 up to a maximum of 0 0.040 on top of that. And so that's how I ended up with the, it ends up being right about, um, I think it's about 1.328, I think is what it ends up being at full load. The memory voltage was set automatically <clears throat> by that XMP, and then I didn't mess with anything else. So that's literally how easy it is. It's like three settings. You wanna come in and set your, um, set your multiplier, to 46, I turned on XMP for the memory, made sure that I had all of the cores selected, set my load line calibration, and then set my voltage. And again, this will be different for just about every system, but it just goes to show you, this is not to be a, a, a how-to like I said before, this is just to show you what's possible. And it made a marked difference in my video encode times, and I'll show you that next. Okay, I wanted to show the difference overclocking can make, and I'm gonna start by showing you the old system that this new one replaced. It was an i7-870 model processor and it was overclocked to 3.6 gigahertz which was pretty good for that particular model and it took 25 minutes and 55 seconds to encode a 10 minute test video. I made it exactly 10 minutes and that way I could track my performance increase as I built the new system. 25 minutes, 55 seconds to encode in HD. Out of the box, my new system took 13 minutes and 14 seconds, and that's with no overclocking whatsoever. 3.9 gigahertz and XMP was not enabled. You can see here the default core voltage that was provided by the motherboard was read as 1.248, and the max CPU temperature uh, was 3. Point, or I'm sorry, 39C. Now with it overclocked. We're down to 10 minutes, oh I'm sorry, add 15 seconds onto that. So 11 minutes and 12 seconds to encode that same 10 minute video. So we picked up a couple of minutes. Our max temperature was only 55 C, which is very good. And the core voltage went up to 1.296. I think it later topped out at 1.328, but that's still okay. Um, Intel says that these processors can take 1.52, but I certainly wouldn't run it that high. And I think I said before, 1.40 was about my limit, and even at 1.40 or 1.42 volts, I wasn't able to get 4700 megahertz to be that stable, so 4600 was a sweet spot for this one. My goal for the system was to have a one-to-one -one ratio, so if the 10-minute video, uh, if it was 10 minutes in length, I was hoping it would take 10 minutes to encode, and we got down to 11 minutes and 12 seconds, like I said, which is about a 10% um, overage for my goal, which is excellent. Really happy with the system. It's very fast, very quiet. Um, I've been happy with it so far.
So that's pretty much all there is to putting a system together and overclocking. Now I didn't do this video to be a how-to with all the details. There are plenty of those out there if you look on YouTube and the Googles. There's guys that really enjoy getting every little bit of performance out of a system and go way into depth on how they did it, what the settings they used, etc, etc. No matter what CPU motherboard combo you end up with, you can probably find a very detailed video on how to overclock it and set it up. You saw the difference that it can make in overclocking, especially in the video encode times which are important to me. If you don't want to build one yourself or don't feel like you have the skill to do that, I would encourage you to go down to one of the computer stores and have them build one for you. They can do the exact same thing I just did, even with the components I chose, um, if they're still available at the time of your purchase and you'll be money ahead versus one of the big box stores pre-built systems like HP or Dell. I don't believe you can overclock those and they're not quite as modular as what you can get on a custom built system. And again, the prices will be almost the same. Be sure to check out my website, www.speedysgarage.net. Hit subscribe in the bottom right corner of the video if you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you soon.